it's Shailene, and it's the middle of the month! In this video, you're going to see me try to make the 12 panel skirt that you see in season 2 of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. The reason I say attempts with an S is because I actually make this skirt two times. The first time, I didn't like how it ended up looking, and then the second time, I think that I was able to... Um, find the right fabric and uh, alter the pattern that I created to make the skirt look more like the Mrs. Maisel skirt. So let's begin. Got all and all. Before we start creating your pattern pieces, you're going to want to take a few measurements. So, I'm going to write this down for you guys so you can see and have a visual. You're going to need three measurements you're going to need your waist, your hips and your waist to hips measurement. Now, the waist is, this is you. <laughs> <You're away. laughs> I am not a drawer, I'm not a... So your waist is usually the, is the smallest part of your body. It is usually above your belly button. Um, most females, most girls, their uh, waist is smaller above the belly button. So it's usually above the belly button, two to three inches is the average. But it's all dependent on you. You want the smallest part of your waist, that's where the top of the skirt will sit. And then you want the hips measurement, which is the largest part of your body under your belly button. So for some girls that is for some girls that is including the butt. For other girls it's just the wide the widest part of their hips. It really depends on you. And then the third measurement, your waist to hips, is that measurement right in between. And that's from the smallest part of your waist that you took down to the measurement of the largest part of your body at your hips. So once you get all your measurements down, you're going to want to write those down. So for me, that's 31 inches, 41 inches, and then my waist to hips is 9 inches. Now, the average for the waist to hips is about 10 inches, I believe, but I'm short-waisted, so I have a smaller measurement there. Now, before you do anything with these measurements, you're going to want to add um, what's called wearing ease to your hips. And that's because when you sit down, your body is going to fold over and you're going to need that room to sit down. So that's about two inches, so add two to four inches to that measurement. I'm going to add three inches for me, so that's 43 inches, or... Wow, I suck. So that's 44 inches. Now, how to create your pattern is you're going to have to figure out how many gores do you want in the skirt. Do you want a 4 gore skirt, 6, 8, 10, 12? That's dependent on you. In this video, we're going to do a 12 gore skirt because that's what's in the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel's skirt. That's what she has. Um, so we're doing 12. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create one pattern that we're going to cut out 12 times. So how do you do that? You're going to take your waist measurement and then you're going to divide by the number of gores you want. So for me, that's 31 inches divided by 12 gores. And that's 2.58. And then you're going to take your hips measurement and then you're going to divide by the number of gores that you're going to make again. So for me, that's 44 inches because of that wearing ease divided by 12. And then you're going to want to round to the nearest quarter of an inch. Um, that's what I'm going to do. So for me, the nearest quarter of an inch is 2.5. And then for this one, it is... I'm going to go up. I'm going to go to 3.75 inches. And those are your two measurements that you're going to need to start creating your pattern. So what we're essentially going to do is we're going to make a pattern that looks like this. We're going to have your waist measurement, your hips measurement, 
your waist to hips right here and then the rest of the skirt that's essentially what your pattern is gonna look like for me this is gonna be 2.5 inches and that's going to be 3.75 inches and this from the waist to the hips is gonna be the 9 inches that I have and then the rest is the length that I want the whole skirt to be so that's going to be the length. Now, two things you can do before you start drawing out your pattern. You could add your seam allowance right now, or you can draw it out and then add your seam allowance later. I'm going to draw it out and then add my seam allowance later. Alright, the first thing you're going to want to do when you make this uh, pattern piece is you're going to want to make a straight line all the way down and that's just so you have like a center um, for the whole pattern. And now we're going to draw our waist measurement. So going back to this, my waist measurement is 2.5 and I'm going to find the middle of 2.5. And then I'm going to measure 9 inches down. That's my waist to hips measurement. And from there, I'm going to take the hips measurement that I got right here, 3.75. And I'm going to mark 3.75 evenly between the two. And then I'm going to mark that from the waist to the hips. I'm going to mark that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the waist down how long I want the skirt to be first. And so for me that's 24 inches. So what I'm doing is I am drawing this line from the hips and I'm just extending the line from the waist to the hips all the way down to the bottom of the skirt and I'm just what I'm doing here is I'm just seeing how wide the bottom of the skirt will be if I kept it straight it's just under six inches wide if I kept it going straight down if you look at the picture her skirt does flare out a little bit at the bottom so it goes from fitted at the waist to the hips and then it starts flaring out so what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to double the bottom of the skirt. So like I said, it is just about 6 inches at the bottom. I'm going to make it, let's say 12. And then I'm going to redraw the line from the hips down to the bottom of the skirt here. So now that I've done that, I'm going to add my seam allowances, which for me, because this has so many different, um, so many gores, this is going to be 12 gores, I'm going to make the seam allowance really small because I'm just going to serge the edges anyway and um, clean up the edges. So I'm going to do a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And then at the bottom, I'm going to do a one inch hem. And there is your pattern piece.
So I decided after making the skirt that I didn't like how it flowed, I didn't like how it looked, I didn't think it was big enough at the bottom of the skirt, so I decided to make the skirt again and I altered the pattern from the beginning of the video a little bit right here. Alright, so here is my original pattern piece. Um, cut with the top taken off. Like I said, this was for the lining for the waist to hip. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep this because that fit perfectly, but I'm going to make a new pattern piece and make this wider at the bottom because I think that that's where I went wrong is that this didn't widen enough and that's why I'm not getting the fluff at the bottom that her skirt in the show had. I decided to widen this bottom flare by 6 inches so that it ends up being about 18 inches at the bottom from the 4 inches at my hips. So I'm just going to add paper here and I'm going to retake this back to the pattern so I have a new pattern created. So I bought this gorgeous iridescent fabric from Joann's. It's got a green, it's a green fabric with a blue sheen to it. I think this would really work and I'm really hoping that this was enough fabric. There was only three yards left of this fabric and by my estimate I'm going to need three yards. So I really, really, really hope this works out. I've measured it three times and I'm still scared to cut it out. So I have just completed cutting out all 12 pieces of this beautiful green blue fabric and I am hoping that this pattern really works out since I didn't test it. Earlier I was scared that the three yards wasn't enough for my pattern but it was actually more than enough. I had about a half yard left over and my husband asked for a matching bow tie because it's like a he said this color is a color he actually wants the car to be but before I sew the pieces together see how at the bottom here this fabric frays really easily I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to bring it to this messy area of my desk and serge it with my little serger here I've already tested a piece hopefully it will keep all of my edges from fraying. So I finished serging all of 12 of the panels that I'm going to be sewing together and I've also cut the lining of the skirt. Again, I did it the same exact way as I did the first skirt where I took part of the pattern from the waist to the hips and I just cut that out and I did it 12 times and then I'm going to add interfacing, stitch this onto the finished skirt here and Hopefully we will have a frillier looking skirt that is more similar to the Mrs. Maisel skirt in the picture instead of what I did in the first pink skirt um, where it wasn't quite as fluffy as I wanted at the bottom. So I kept the waist the same like I said and that should fit me exactly the same and the flare starts right at the hips and as you can tell this is, these four panels make a half circle, so if you're familiar with a full circle skirt, that's what the bottom of the skirt's going to look like. However, because this is four panels and I have 12 panels, this is actually going to be a, at the very bottom of the skirt, it's going to end up being a one and a half circle skirt at the bottom when it's all put together. So what I'm hoping is when I stand up 
the skirt is going to fall and have a nice drape for each um, panel that I made and it's going to drape a lot better than the skirt that I made in the pink fabric. So I will finish this up and then I will model the pink skirt and the green skirt against each other. I hope this video was super helpful for you guys and I hope that I was able to explain the process and what I was thinking throughout the whole video. If you have any questions on how I did it, feel free to comment below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel.